I think that they did. I feel like we talked so much coming into this game about Franklin and Coach Mark Fannin and taking over in 2020 and being in the state championship every single year that he's been head coach. That is an unbelievable feat to accomplish. On the other side of that, to hear a story like Coach Driscoll that has put so much time and effort. He took over the program in 2008. They were winless that season. They hadn't been to the playoffs in 40 years. They haven't missed a playoff since he's been there. He played in a state championship and didn't win. It has been heartache since 2018 when they lost to Grandview to come in and finally get that illustrious state title. Coach, there's, there's almost something even more special about that, if you ask me. The community is absolutely what Anna is all about. Last year, we made a comment that I said, this is the best team that Anna has seen in the history of Anna football. I had a fan reach out to me over email and say, hey, lady, just because you weren't alive at this point doesn't mean that the teams in the 50s weren't as good as this one. I'm talking. <laughs> this is a program, guys, yeah. that cares and has been passionate, not just now, but for so long, Coach, to see them <laughs> hoist that trophy. I can only imagine what was going through their minds. What you need to do is get back in this game. Don't let the optics of this quarterback craziness get in the way. Go out there. Defense, you have to start playing better. And right now, it looks like that's been the change because with an inexperienced quarterback you need that defense to be the foundation of this Lake Travis team and maybe he finally got through to him at halftime. His footwork right there is exceptional and even when he's taking a hit that release point is so quick he's able to get those passes off coach that it's almost impossible which is funny because he's so small sometimes it's hard to see over a line if they're really <laughs> big. You've got that 3-4 split coverage that both is running on at defense. There are plays to be had in the middle. Make a formation that forces them to use that three up front. Find the bubbles bust through it. Keep going. It's going to happen. Alito is 14 and 1 in AT&T Stadium. That's an astounding stat. That one coming in 2017, the loss from College Station. These are kids that grew up watching this going, hey, if we ever see these guys again, it's going down. And um, coach, 35 to nothing seems pretty darn good, doesn't it? Ooh. Slot Team Mafia is, is exactly what it is, and you're right, Coach, when you say that no one does it better than Liberty Hill. They've proved that, and it's funny because you go back to the beginning of the season and the UIL changed the cut block rule, and we're going, okay, how, how much is that going to affect? And we saw a lot of teams. It really affected Slot T teams, but Liberty Hill, the well-oiled machine is back on track, and they have found a way to figure it out, and they look like the team to beat now in Region 4. We're going to take you inside the world of television. This is our rundown. Our great producers put this together. Um, it says, on cam, Pickle cooks on Lano. So let's get in the kitchen, shall we? This Lano team, I watched the game tonight. Man, what they showed tonight. <laughs> I heart Lana. Look, see, we're, we're showing him. We're bringing him in to the Yellow Jacket spirit. You, wait, did you, it's really awesome to see what they're doing out first there. First time since 2002 that they make the playoffs. Again, that's yep. insane, right? I mean, Nick was in diapers at that point. <laughs> like, hey. Nick specifically. Hey, whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> same age, same age. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go back to 18-year-old <laughs> Ashley Pickle, but if I would, man, there's going to be a lot of people that tell you that you can't do something, that you shouldn't be doing something. Don't get mad. Don't use that and get angry or quit or not do something because someone tells you that you can't do it. Use it at fire, man. Use it as the passion and, and don't do it to prove them wrong. Do it to prove to yourself that you can do it and that you are capable of doing things that people tell you that maybe you're not, you shouldn't be doing. You didn't come from the right place. You're, you're not the right gender, you know. Do it and say, hey, no, I can do this, but do it for yourself. Don't do it for other people. Don't do it to prove other people wrong. Do it because you want to do it for yourself and you want to prove to yourself that you can accomplish things that people say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Absolutely were with quarterback Austin Novosad and what they had under the Tigers' leadership there, but they revenge that. You take a look at the road to the championship and you see the regional finals. They ended up playing Dripping Springs again, this time revenging that loss. But Tep, when you take a look at that, it's it's a difficult path, but specifically that semifinal. And I'm very interested to hear your take on that because I think that all of us were surprised, just maybe from a pedigree standpoint, watching that game in the office last Saturday and seeing Katie go down to an outstanding Vandergrift team. Like Tepper said, Shadow Creek came in, and I think we all kind of expected them to at least have a little bit more of a veteran squad. But when you take a look at that defensive line, Coach, I mean, they have legitimately been the dominant force in this game so far. The defense as a whole has to be the story. Holding a Manville team to zero points in the first half, what are you seeing out there that's working for them? Well. 
and welcome back into Dave Campbell's Texas football tonight. We've mentioned it week 11, the pinnacle of Texas high school football before we get into the playoffs and playoff implications are across the entire state. We'll start off here in District 9 4A Division 1 out in East Texas. It's almost whiplash talking about the youth of university <laughs> and then going to the senior leadership there in Belton, specifically Reese Rumfield, a three year starter there for the Tigers. What is he going to have to do to get this offense rolling here in the second half? Judging from how it performed tonight. Code Red was sounding the alarms on high volume tonight and a real big thing coming into this game when you're going up against a slot key like Navarro. What coach said is it comes down to championship eyes and what he means by that is first off you have to get lined up correctly but after that it's all about your eyes and championship eyes to him is something that you can look at and say don't get caught looking at the ball. You have to just fill your keys and do your assignment. And that was the whole mantra of the game tonight from that Code Red defense was staying calm, not focusing too much on the ball, and attacking the slot T from head down and knowing where you were supposed to be. So while this win is great and you want to go out and you want to puff your chest and say that we're the town of spring, what they're really looking for is to grab that number one seed heading into playoffs. And I will say real fast, as I was walking off the sideline, heard some of the spring players talking about, man, we better move up in the rankings. And so I looked over and I was like, well, if you don't, uh, it's at T-E-P-P-E-R on Twitter. You can send your complaints there, guys. Mm -hmm. Come on. I thought you had more pool than that over there at Dave Campbell's. Thank you so much. Great job tonight. <laughs>